So welcome everyone, glad you're here. Um, today we gather to focus on the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit, and sacrament of confirmation. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let's get pleased to pray together the Holy Spirit prayer. You pray it together, please. Come Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. Lord God, we invite your Holy Spirit among us this evening. Open our hearts to your love and your presence. Open our minds to see clearly the gift of your life given to us in your sacraments. You continue to pour out your love and your life upon us. Open our hearts to receive that love and that life. We ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we focused uh, in this series on God's love and God's decision to share his love with us. So love is the giving of life, the gift of life. And God chooses to share his life with us. And he so loved the world, he sent his only son into the world to be that delivery of his love, to be the embrace of his love upon the world. And Christ established his church then to be that, that channel of its love for the world. And through his church, which is a sacrament in itself, because it's a, it's a connection between divine life and human life, he gives us these particular sacraments. We talked about the sacraments of baptism so far. We talked about the sacrament of reconciliation, and last week the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. We kind of ran out of time last week, so we're going to first start by any, asking any questions you might have about the first three segments, the first three sessions. So baptism, reconciliation, or Holy Eucharist. We did a really good job, Bill, with no questions. <laughs> Anybody on mine have any questions? Nobody. Nobody, all right. So the focus this evening is obviously on the Holy Spirit. Now, I grew up with a very strong relationship with Jesus, and my image of Jesus um, What? It says, good job, Bill. <laughs> what about Father Glenn? So, I'm doing a lot of talking here. Give him two. Where was I? Oh, yeah. So, when I was made my first communion, my grandmother gave me a beautiful picture of Jesus the Good Shepherd. I was on my, over my bed. Uh, in fact, it's still there today, so that'd be. 60 years, 60 years ago that you gave me that picture. It's still my parents' house, my mother's house, uh, over my bed. 
And a uh, picture of Jesus, the good shepherd, he's sitting there holding a little lamb in his arms. And that image of Jesus has been in my mind's eye my whole life. That's that personal relationship. And it did, I didn't come to a deep relationship with the God the Father until later in life when I really kind of fell in love with the Return of the Prodigal Son painting by Rembrandt. Picture of the father embracing his son. That's the image I have in my mind's eye of God the Father. But how does one picture in our mind's eye the Holy Spirit? We, we hear imagery like a, a dove came down from heaven, well, flames of fire came down from heaven. But we don't really have that image, I don't anyway, of, of the Holy Spirit in my mind. But I've learned to experience the Holy Spirit. I've learned to experience the movement of the Spirit in my life. And in a very profound way, since I've been ordained a priest, precisely in the sacraments. So, for example, uh, two years ago at the Steubenville Conference, um, you know, the Holy Spirit really moves very powerfully through the Steubenville Conference. There's 2,500 young people there and all types of chaperones, et cetera, maybe 3,000 people. And we're all praying together for the Holy Spirit to come down. You can feel that presence of the Holy Spirit moving. And then, typically, the priests spend hours in confession during these times. And so in that time, this last time I was there in a particular way, people would come to me for confession. I, you know, I wouldn't know them. They'd be from different parts of the country. But as soon as they started talking, I knew what God wanted me to tell them. I can't explain that. And I was blown away by it. But I knew the Holy Spirit was working in and through me in the sacrament. I could feel the power of the Spirit moving. Things came to me, I had no idea where they came from. But I knew that God wanted me to tell each one of those young people that day what to say. Because the words of God. You look at, you know, Scripture, and you, you see how the prophets, for example, are moved by the Spirit to speak, to write, they, they say how they're moved by the Spirit. So I want to talk a minute about the Holy Spirit kind of moving through sacred scripture. So in the Old Testament times, people believed in one God, right? They were very profoundly a strong faith in one God. Yet in the Hebrew scripture, there were three different particular names for that one God. One was Yahweh, which was the transcendent, all-powerful creator God. The other name for God that appears in Hebrew is Elohim. He was the God that was with them on the journey. He pitched his tent. He was with them. Down to earth God. God with them on, on the way in the journey. The third name for God was Ruha, or spirit. So the first, the first line of sacred scripture Genesis, the mighty wind, Ruha, hovered over the waters. The breath of God hovered over the waters. And that breath of God transformed all that chaos into the beauty of creation. The Holy Spirit begins the very beginning of Scripture. It runs throughout sacred Scripture. The life breath of God. So in the creation story, you know, God took the clay of the earth and he breathed his life breath, the Holy Spirit, into the clay of the earth, and man became a living being. So God reveals himself to Moses as being itself. Not a being, but as being itself. And God chooses to share his life, his life breath. And he breathes that life breath, and man becomes a living being, sharing the very life breath of God. That life breath of God is the ground of our being. Giving us the ability to, to be in relationship, to, to love and to experience love. To come to know, to, to be in these deep relationships. One of the greatest mysteries of science is still, you know, the, the human mind, the human thought. Consciousness, human consciousness. 
Science can't explain that. They can explain the, you know, the mechanical workings of the brain, but this idea of spirit, of consciousness, being able to be in relationship with love, being able to love and to feel loved, that is our sharing in the very life of God. And God chooses to share his life with us. And we see that, that spirit moving throughout the ages. Spirit of God. At the baptism of Jesus, the heavens are open. The Holy Spirit came down in the form of a dove. So a dove is an ancient symbol of love. The love was seen in the visible form coming down upon Jesus. And throughout scripture, we see him as being led by the Spirit into the desert. He's led by the Spirit every time he turned around. The Spirit was leading him and guiding him. And he talked about that indwelling Spirit at the Last Supper. He promised to, to give us that gift of in, his indwelling life, his Spirit. So we are blessed to have the Spirit among us. In the, in the sacrament of confirmation, we call down that power of that Spirit upon our young people to empower them, to fill them with his love, his life, his grace, to empower them. Now, when I was confirmed, I don't recall any, you know, huge transformation in my life because that spirit kind of was dormant, I think, for a period of time. I wasn't really open to it at the time. I was in eighth grade and I was confirmed. It was kind of like it was in there but not really stirred into flame yet. But then later in my life, when I stirred that, that spirit into flame, changed my life, transformed my life. The gift that I was given in baptism and confirmation came to life in me over time. And that's, that's what God wants to do. He wants to work in and through us. So we're going to share a couple of scripture passages today as we begin. The first one takes place on Easter Sunday. Now think about what just happened with the crucifixion of Jesus, the passion he went through. The apostles are hiding in the upper room. They're afraid. And Jesus walks through the wall. And he appears to them. Listen to the words now of the risen Lord. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The apostles were hiding. They were very much afraid. They were confused. And the first thing Jesus does was, was breathe the Holy Spirit upon them. There's a great image in the prophet Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, where the prophet has a vision of this dry-boned plain. Think about desert, sand, 
with all these dry human bones laying on the, on the sand. He talks about how the people had cut themselves off from the life breath of God. They had turned away from God, disconnected themselves from God. And through the prophet, the whole, God promises to rebreathe that spirit back into them. So I look at you know, a world today, and I see, you know, obviously a growing secularization of our culture, and I see people cutting themselves off from the very life spirit of God. Because of our free will, we can do that. We have the ability to cut ourselves off. A lot of people are kind of going through the motions of life, kind of existing and not really living. And I, I, I was there one time in my life. I know what it's like. I can see it in people's eyes. There's a lack of joy out there. There's a sadness that's hard to, hard to, hard to understand, but it's there. It comes from emptiness that comes from cutting ourselves off from God. But God promises to rebreathe that spirit back into us. He's always there. He's always there waiting for us to open our hearts to that, to that spirit. Rend your hearts open, we're told, at the beginning of Lent. Open your hearts to receive that gift. Now the apostles, you know, they received this gift of the Holy Spirit, but they still seem awful confused. They're waiting for this empowerment. So the next scene we're going to read is the Acts of the Apostles. So this is uh, Pentecost, 50 days later. This is probably, you know, uh, the most significant passage for Sacrament of Confirmation. It's precisely what we're going to do on April 16th here at St. Louis the King. We're going we're gonna to call down the Holy Spirit upon everybody here. We're going to call down upon the candidates. We're going to call down upon all the sponsors and parents and families. We're calling down the fire of the Holy Spirit upon us. It's going to be our Pentecost. April 16th at 7 o'clock, right here at our church, we're having our Pentecost. We're calling down the power of the Spirit. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind. And it filled the entire house in which they were. When there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed to them, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. Jesus, the Nazarene, was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourself know. This man delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. God raised this Jesus. Of this, we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured it forth, as you both see and hear. The word of the Lord.
One of the anchor points of my faith is the transformation of the apostles. Think about Peter, for example. He denied even knew Christ three times on Good Friday. Look at Peter today in today's reading after Pentecost. After they were empowered by the Holy Spirit, they're, they're different people, they're transformed. They were changed by the whole Easter experience. They were changed by the resurrection appearances. But most specifically, they were changed by the power of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. They were different people. They were emboldened. They went out and they brought the gospel to the whole world. They were, they were hiding in the upper room, you know, Easter Sunday. Hiding. They were afraid. And they were transformed by the Holy Spirit. This transformation of the apostles is one of the anchor points of my faith. They went on to die themselves, except for John. All 11 of them died for Christ. They were crucified. They had this incredible courage that came from the Holy Spirit. Now this next passage, that we're going to set up the sacrament of confirmation because it shows the apostles going out and actually, the apostles themselves, actually confirming. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On that day, there broke out a severe persecution of the church in Jerusalem, and all were scattered throughout the countryside of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Those had been scattered went about preaching the word. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them Peter and John who went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit for he had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. So we live in an apostolic church. So we have an unbroken chain of bishops going back to the apostles. So just as the apostles went out and confirmed by bringing the Holy Spirit down upon those baptized, on April 16th, Bishop John Durfler, successor of the apostle as bishop, is going to be here in our church to do exactly the same thing. He's going to call down the Holy Spirit as a successor to the apostles upon our students in confirmation. What a gift we have. So we're going to move now to Bishop Barron's 23-minute uh, video on confirmation. He's going to talk near the end of his, his uh, presentation on the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. So this handout here, you have the, the actual gifts of the Spirit. He's going to talk about those. Um, I'm also going to, after he's done, say a few words about uh, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. We have a handout for that, too, showing the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Uh, to me, uh, I really experienced, in a great way, uh, the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, all that good stuff. So I'm going to share my story about that, too. The sacrament of confirmation is often underappreciated. If confession is feared, confirmation is sometimes forgotten. Yet 
like all the sacraments. It too is an encounter with Christ. Through it, the Lord confirms us with the gifts of his Holy Spirit, thus enabling us to do Christ's work. Throughout the ages, the ascended Jesus sends the Spirit for the transformation of souls and the transfiguration of the world. So he's spoken about sacraments in general, and we've looked at the first great sacrament of initiation or incorporation, namely baptism. So we come to the second sacrament of initiation, confirmation. Now, I suppose I'd be considered an expert in the theory and practice of confirmation simply because I'm a bishop, and bishops do a lot of confirmations. So I've been a bishop for um, four years, I've confirmed, I was estimating, about 10,000 people. So it does add up after a while. I've given probably 150 confirmation homilies. Now, they're not all, you know, unique. There's some repetition, but I have spent a lot of time with this sacrament. Um, it, sort of notoriously, confirmation is known as the sacrament that people have a hard time articulating. You know, what, what is confirmation? If you ask Catholics about the other ones, they can probably say something, you know, relatively coherent. But when it comes to confirmation, what is that sacrament? They, they can be a little tongue-tied. More to it, and I've been in now two major archdioceses, Chicago and L.A., and in both places we debate all the time. You know, what's the best uh, time to uh, give the sacrament of confirmation? What's the, the right age, et cetera, et cetera? Some of the theologians say you should confirm in infancy, right after baptism. Others say, no, no, at First Communion, when they're seven, you should give confirmation. Others say, no, when they're 12, we do it when they're about 15 out here. So we debate that all the time. So what is confirmation? Uh, many fall back on the kind of tried and true, uh, it's the Catholic bar mitzvah. <laughs> well, uh, may I suggest that's certainly not true. It's not the Catholic bar mitzvah. The best way to get at it and to understand its practice is to see it as the second of the great sacraments of initiation. And so it's deeply tied to baptism. Listen, by the way, to this from the Catechism of the Catholic Church, very clarifying. It says, by the sacrament of confirmation, the connection of the baptized to the church is rendered more perfect. And they are enriched by a special force of the Holy Spirit and are thus obliged more strictly to spread and defend the faith by word and by action as true witnesses of Christ. That's a bit of a mouthful, but that's the whole theology of, of confirmation right there. Notice first the connection to baptism. So it begins with the baptized, and it's meant to confirmare, right, to strengthen, to confirm what has been given in baptism, which is that relationship to Christ and the Holy Spirit. Confirmation strengthens it, stirs it up. To what end? To spread and defend the faith by word and action as true witnesses of Christ. Strengthening people for this kind of mission. That's confirmation. Here's a nice quote I found from Pope Pius XII's wonderful letter, Mystici Corporis. That's an encyclical he wrote back in the mid 20th century, and one of the greatest, I think, of the last century. But listen to his characterization of confirmation. By the chrism, the anointing of confirmation, new strength is infused into believers that they may uphold and defend vigorously the church, their mother, and the faith which they have received from her. It's the same idea of the stirring up and strengthening. What? For the sake of mission, defending the church and also spreading the faith. 
you know, can I stay with that image maybe? It's an older one, but, but one that I think is still helpful. Confirmed people become soldiers of Christ. Now, don't literalize it. I'm not putting rifles in the hands of, of these teenagers. I, soldiers of Christ, and it's being described here, who are defending the faith. But more than that, they're going on the march. They're going on the march to spread the faith. You know, by the way, that line from the Lord Jesus himself, that I, for many, many years, I, I think I simply misunderstood. He said to Peter, you know, thou art Peter, upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I don't know, somehow I always imagine that as, well, I guess so hell's coming after us and we're going to always be able to hold our ground. But think about it. In the ancient world, if you were going after a city, you were trying to conquer a city, what would you do? You'd go after the gates, right? You'd try to break through the gates. That was the weakest part of the wall. That's not a defensive image. That's an offensive image. The gates of hell will not prevail against you. In other words, Peter, you're, you're the rock upon which I'm building my church. The church is meant to go on the march, to conquer the world for Christ. Again, don't, don't interpret that you know, aggressively or in terms of violence. It's, it's a metaphor. Confirmed people are very much under that aegis, it seems to me. They've been given the strength of the Holy Spirit, stirring up what was given already in baptism so they might defend and then spread the faith. Here's something now from the scripture that I find illuminating. I think confirmation stands to baptism a bit as Pentecost stands to Easter. And here's what I mean. Remember Easter Sunday night, Jesus appears to the uh, disciples, the apostles, and he breathes on them. Beautiful pneuma in Greek, translated spiritus in Latin, breath. He breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit's given in baptism. But see, between Easter and Pentecost, the apostles, though they had the Spirit, they, they had not been fortified and strengthened for their great work. Then came Pentecost, the day of the Spirit, and those beautiful symbols of wind and fire. And from that moment, what happened to them? They became ardent defenders of the faith and spreading it all over the world. The gates of hell will not prevail against you. Good. And filled with that confidence, off they went. Confirmation is like the Pentecost moment, the inrushing of the Holy Spirit to fortify, strengthen people for this great work. One more thing from the scripture I think is really illuminating. Uh, if you look in the eighth chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, you'll find this scene. St. Philip has gone to Samaria and he's converted several people. They've been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, it says. Right? They receive baptism. But the apostles in Jerusalem find out about this. And they say, okay, they've been baptized in the name of the Lord, but, but they've not yet received the Holy Spirit. And so the apostles sent two apostolic heavyweights. They sent Peter and John to Samaria to call forth the Holy Spirit upon them. And so it happened. Read Acts 8 because it explains exactly what the church continues to do to the present day. It, it takes people like me, the bishops, who are successors of the apostles, and it sends them to the baptized to call forth the Holy Spirit to make them fiery defenders and spreaders of the faith. That's confirmation. Okay. Now, the Holy Spirit comes and remember, ex opere operato, when I am there at a confirmation calling forth the Holy Spirit, I've got total confidence the Holy Spirit's going to come. It doesn't depend on my virtue, doesn't depend on whether the kids are totally open to it or not. It comes, ex opere operato. Good. And the Holy Spirit, everybody, never comes empty-handed. The Holy Spirit comes bearing gifts. 
And the church has this marvelous tradition stretching back to the prophet Isaiah of naming the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. I'll tell you, sorry. when I first started doing confirmations, I was trying to really engage the kids. So I'd go out and I'd talk to the confirmandi. Well, I've discovered this now. Confirmandi, the day of their confirmation. I mean, and the bishop comes out, you know, hey, do you know any of the gifts of the Holy Spirit? I mean, nothing, nothing. So early on, I, I'm at this parish, and I, I went out and I said, so can any of you name uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Nothing. I said, how about one? Can you know one gift of the Spirit? Nothing. Okay, so I finish the homily. I turn around. I don't know how I missed this, but I turn around and right, right behind the altar, in huge banners, are the seven gifts. Of, and I said, "Come on, you! They're right up there." You know. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding, counsel, piety, fortitude, and fear of the Lord. Now, don't give me too much credit. That's 150 uh, confirmation homilies. That's how I've memorized the seven gifts of the Spirit. But you know, each one, I'll do it just real briefly, is worth thinking about a bit because it shows you how the confirmed are being equipped for their mission. And, and keep, if you want, that soldierly image in mind. Wisdom, wisdom. Thomas Aquinas said that wisdom is the view from the hilltop. What he meant was the view of life from the standpoint of the highest cause. It's cool, isn't it? See, I can look at my life from all kinds of angles, you know, my, my family life, my professional life, um, my relationships, uh, my political life. I, I can look at things from different angles. But if I look at it from the standpoint of God, what does God want? What's God up to? What's God trying to accomplish right now? Then I've got the attitude of wisdom. You know, it is not true so much today in, in military uh, circles, but we'll go back a couple centuries. What did soldiers always seek? What did generals always seek? But the high ground, right? So they could survey the whole field. Well, that's the, that's the attitude of wisdom. That's the perspective of wisdom. I'm up on the height. I see things from the standpoint of God, and therefore I know what to do. I know how to interpret life. That's wisdom. How about knowledge and understanding, the next two gifts of the Spirit? They don't have to do with trigonometry and physics and chemistry and history. And I tell the students, don't think you know, you'll, you'll pass your test because you've got these gifts. They have to do with our understanding of and our capacity to teach the great truths of the faith. I've been decrying now for the past, I don't know, 20 years, the dumbing down of Catholicism. It's been a pastoral disaster, mind you. We're a smart religion. We always have been. We're a smart religion. We, we honor the mind. We honor theology. You want to be an effective defender and spreader of the faith? You need these gifts of knowledge and understanding to understand what the church teaches, to be able to speak it to a culture growing increasingly skeptical of it. Stay with the soldier uh, analogy. Soldiers need to be smart. You bet. You bet. And if they're not, that's pretty dangerous for them and for them, other people around them. How about the gift of fortitude? Soldiers need fortitude, courage, you bet. Easy today, defending the faith and spreading it. You have any doubts on that score, I recommend go on the internet any time of the day or night. I just finished something, I don't know if you heard about this, the, uh, it's called the Reddit AMA. So Reddit's this very popular website. We're, you know, it's one of the most popular, I think, in the whole world, and people exchange opinions on everything. Well, AMA means ask me anything. So people come on and say, okay, you know, fair game, ask me whatever you want. Well, uh, the positive thing is I was number two after Bill Gates, and I was just ahead of Bernie Sanders. No kidding. And believe me, not because you know, all these kids know who I am. They don't. But religion, they're really interested in religion. Now, the, the bad news is I mean, you, you got to have a pretty strong stomach to make your way through the comments on Reddit. 
uh, is there an awful lot of vitriol, awful lot of hatred of the church, hatred of God? Uh huh. Fortitude? You bet those who are defending and spreading the faith need it. That's a gift of the Holy Spirit. How about counsel? Counsel is a gift given at confirmation, a gift of the Holy Spirit. Counsel is moral know-how. Think of a, uh, of a skilled quarterback who's able to read the defense, call an audible because he knows things have shifted, who goes back in the pocket and sees the play is broken down, but here's another play that he could develop if he scrambles a bit here. It's a feel, it's a know-how what to do in the present situation. Or think of someone skilled in, the, in their area of business that can do a similar move, can adjust and can make uh, changes in their plans, etc. That's prudence or practical wisdom. So counsel is this kind of practical wisdom when it comes to the moral life and the spiritual life. What do I do now? Lord, what, what's the, the demand of the moment now? Lord, as things are shifting in maybe ways I didn't imagine, how do I react? What do I do? How do I choose? Think of the great figures now in the Bible. Think of the great saints. They had this gift of counsel. Do you want to defend the faith and spread the faith? You need this. Now, why? Why? Because, as St. Pope Paul VI put it, people listen to teachers, yes, but only in the measure that teachers are also witnesses. You see what he meant? People that know how to live the Christian life. They, they exhibit the Christian life in action. That's what people of counsel have. How about the gift of piety? I look out at the kids that I'm confirming, and I say, I bet most of you wouldn't want to be called pious, would you? You know, we, we kind of associate pious with a sort of simpering religiosity, maybe, you know, but that's not at all what it means. Piety is a type of justice. Rendering to God what is due to God. God who made us from nothing. God who gave us being and life and breath and power and capacity. Whatever we have, it's been given to us. Paul said that. What do you have that's not been given? Well, piety now is the response of someone who says, yes, Lord, I know that. And therefore, I owe you my worship. I owe you my honor. I owe you my life. That's not simpering religiosity. That's a very strong stands. Best person that knows my, my obligation in justice is to go to Mass, is to pray, is to give honor to God. You want to defend the faith and spread it? You need those things? Absolutely. Finally, fear of the Lord. That's a gift of the Spirit. It hasn't a thing to do with being terrified of God. Don't think of it that way. But this deep and profound and abiding awe in the presence of God, I put it that way. Who deserves the deepest reverence of which our heart is capable? God alone. Not family, not country, as, as wonderful as those are. Not my organization, my company, as great as those might be. The only one that deserves the deepest, most ardent reverence of which my heart is capable is God. And therefore, I have fear of the Lord. What attracts people to our faith? Yes, clarity of thought. I'm all in favor of it. I want understanding and knowledge. Absolutely. Moral uprightness. Yeah, people of counsel. That attracts people to the faith. But I think maybe more than anything else, when they sense in us that God has lit the deepest and most abiding fire in our hearts, when they see that in us, they sense that in us, they're drawn. And so we need this gift of fear of the Lord if we are to spread the faith. Let me close with this. This is based now on, on you know, lots and lots of confirmations and doing the confirmation ceremony. We ask the young people, again, they're mostly young people, to stand. And then I take them through 
their baptismal promises. Again, remember the connection between confirmation and baptism, both sacraments of initiation. I take them through their baptismal promises. Do you believe in God? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Do you renounce Satan and all his works? What am I doing in the name of the church? I'm compelling these young people to stand on their own two feet and tell God and everybody in that room who they are, what they stand for. When a, um, a young man joined the Roman army in ancient times, he took an oath expressing his loyalty to the Roman army and the Roman Empire. You know what that oath was called? It was called a sacramentum in Latin, a sacrament. You see now these soldiers of Christ to be, the church compels them to make a public sacramentum, a public declaration of who they are. And then they come forward one by one and I anoint them, how strange really, with the sign of the cross of Jesus, which was meant by the way in the ancient Roman world to be a sign of shame. That's what we'll do to you if you, if you get in our way. We'll, we'll put you on this instrument of torture. But see, we Christians hold it up even as a kind of taunt. Why? Because we know God's love is more powerful than the cross. It's more powerful than anything that's in the world. It's more powerful than the cruelty of human beings. And so we hold up that cross of Jesus. And I, listen now, in the name of the church, brand those young people with that sign because confirmation is one of these character sacraments. You know where that word comes from? Our word character is from a Latin word, caracter. It means a brand. When you joined the Roman army, you took your sacramentum, your oath, but you know what they did next? And maybe, remember the movie, it's an old movie now, um, uh, Gladiator with uh, Russell Crowe, remember? He had this uh, tattoo on his arm because they would brand you. they brand you with the, with the tattoo of the Roman army. Once these young people make their sacramentum, I then, in the name of the church, brand them for this life and the life to come with the sign of Christ's cross to make them soldiers of Christ, stirring up their baptismal charism so they can defend the faith and spread the faith, knowing that not even the gates of hell will prevail against them. Everybody, that's the power of confirmation. Well, Bill's getting ready, I'll say a few words. So love is a choice. God chooses to share his life with us. That's why we're here. God does not want a world without each one of us. So God made that choice. But love has to be free, so it has to be accepted. So we have to accept this gift of love, of life. We can cut ourselves off, we can choose death. But God wants us to choose life, the fullness of life. So when you were baptized, I would guess all of you, your parents made that choice to bring you to Christ. And we claimed you for Christ. Now it's your turn to make that choice, to accept that gift of the Holy Spirit. I'm sure your parents are probably pushing you a little bit, but it's really your choice to be confirmed to accept that gift of the Spirit. If I have one um, regret in my life, I don't have many, one of them is not accepting the Spirit earlier in my life. When I finally opened my heart to the Spirit, my life changed. It was like everything was different. I like went from seeing the world in black and white to seeing the world in high definition, technicolor. 4K now, whatever it is. Life was brighter. Everything was still the same, but it looked different through my eyes. Now, 
I do a lot of spiritual direction as a priest in 22 years now. I talk to a lot of people about their faith journey. I hear that same regret over and over and over. I wish I had put God in my life sooner. It's Everything changes. All the gifts and the fruits of the Holy Spirit, the love, the joy, the peace that God wants us to have, that fullness of life that God wants us to have, comes through life in the Spirit. So I really encourage you to open your heart to that gift. And then when you, when you finally do that, when you finally really open your heart to that gift, then that, that gift wants to flow through you. So I'm talking a lot about being spirit-filled, opening our hearts to the Spirit, being spirit-led, by being guided by the Spirit. The Spirit's so powerful, it really kind of guides you. All those, all those empowerments that Bishop talked about, the, the gifts of the Spirit empower us. But for what? For a mission. As the Father has sent me, so I send you, Jesus said to the apostles, and he's saying to us. Christ's church has a mission, or does Christ's mission have a church? I think the mission of Christ has a church, and we are the church. Now, one of my pet peeves, when people look at young people and say, oh, you are the future of the church. No, you're not. You are the church. Zeke, you're the church. You're five. You're a child of God. You're baptized. You are the church. I'm the church. He can build the church. Father Benny's the church. We're all the church. We're the body of Christ. So teenagers, don't say you're going to be the church someday. You're a church right now, right here. We're all the church. We're the body of Christ. We all have our particular role to play in Christ's church. It's a living, moving organism. It's alive. The Spirit's flowing through us. That's who we are as a church. So make that choice. Accept the gift. It's an amazing gift. Don't wait. I had a good friend who was, he's, he's deceased now. He's an older gentleman when I knew him. And he was um, on the beaches in the first wave at Normandy. And um, he, was a, he was a policeman his whole life, raised seven children. And when he was in his 60s, when he retired, he really, for the first time, put God in his life. And he was baptized in the Holy Spirit and alive. He used to come and witness to my youth group all the time. He was this great big macho guy, you know, De highly, highly decorated World War II veteran. Policeman his whole life. When he would tell his story, he would break down and cry like a baby. He regretted so much not putting God in his life earlier. He was so alive in the Spirit. He was so transformed by the Spirit. He wished he had done it earlier in his life. Now, in my case, I wish I had done it earlier to save me a lot of heartache because I was going the wrong way in my life. I needed that spirit to guide me. I was feeling empty a good part of my life. Making money and all that stuff was supposed to make us happy. It wasn't. God was missing in my life. And I wished I had put that spirit in my life earlier. But I didn't. But I am what I am. All I can tell you is don't wait. Open yourself to that spirit now. If you're five years old or if you're 15 years old or if you're 60 years old. Open your heart to that spirit now. Don't wait. Because without the spirit, there's emptiness in this world. It's all around us. And God wants us to be fully alive. He wants to empower us with all the gifts of the spirit. He wants us to enjoy the, this world and the world to come. He wants us to be full of love, full of joy, full of peace, all those fruits of the spirit. He wants us to be spirit-filled, spirit-led, and spirit-giving people. We're gonna go. We're gonna go real quick on this. Uh, so the one point on this this week 
Uh, and by the way, when this is all over, I'll provide the whole thing for anybody that wants it, um, for anyone that wants the information. But the one thing that I wanted to uh, spend time on this week is um, the matter. We haven't, I don't think we've done that a whole lot. Uh, so Eucharist obviously is bread and wine, wine mixed with water. Uh, there's uh, symbolic and, and uh, reality elements to that. Uh, you know the the bread feeds you uh the water and wine is is uh um it g brings you joy it also brings you life baptism is water uh it cleanses you uh also brings you life so the the one here is oil and it's just a little confusing and i wanted to talk real quickly um so th the reality of oil and the reason that God picked this medium for this is because um, oil, just like it does in a car, uh, it protects the engine, right? It'll protect you uh, from outside influences. And also, it lubricates the engine, makes it run well, so it will loosen you up to the Holy Spirit, so the, every sacrament's physical matter has, has a, a reality to it from the real world, and the reality to this one is both of those things. So just like it works in a car, that's what it's going to do for you. It's going to bring the Holy Spirit, and think about what it did for the kings of old, right? It, they would put it on them, and then all those seven gifts that uh, Bishop Barron just talked about they would all be imparted to the king in the Old Testament. And now they're being imparted to you. God wants all of you to be kings. And so he's anointing all of you with his oil, with his Holy Spirit and his love to be kings for him, to go out and be holy servants for all the people in the world, just like a king is supposed to be. Right? That's, that's what confirmation is. So, um, quickly, a Holy Spirit uh, moment for me. Uh, Father talked about living life in 4K. Um, my uh, whole adult life uh, had incredible contentious relationship uh, with my father. And at one point, um, he, I was not in a good way with my church. Uh, and he tried to write me a letter about how I would better get saved or else I was going to go straight to hell and I was incredibly hurt by the whole thing and so I wrote him this big long letter and I quoted the scripture uh, quoted the scripture um, you know that if you want to pray you should go to your secret room and pray in secret or else you're a hypocrite and I, and I was about to send it to him and right before right, actually he came to visit right before I was about to give it to him my wife, we had just been married for a little less than a year, she grabbed it from me and she stuck it in her back pocket and she wouldn't let, her, let me give it to him. And I believe the Holy Spirit was talking to her that day. And so for years I struggled with that. Years I struggled and I, I went to a retreat. I came back to the church and the Holy Spirit filled me up, filled me up at that retreat. And in Ash Wednesday, I was sitting at Mass and for years I had struggled with, you know, we're supposed to be so penitent at Ash Wednesday. Why is it that we all come in and get gigantic black crosses on our forehead so that we can go around town and advertise that we're Catholic? Why is that? That doesn't seem very penitent to me. And so all those thoughts are rolled up in my head along with, this, along with these feelings that I've always had from my father. And I was sitting, sitting at Mass, and I read the re readings, and I had, I had done confession the day before. And as I sat in Mass, every color in the room was bright and vivid, and I almost had to shut my eyes to it. And every thought that came to me came at 100 miles an hour, and I couldn't stop it. And it was like every piece of the Mass made exquisite sense to me. And in that moment, I realized the readings...
from Ash Wednesday, which they are all the time, is that reading. Go to your secret room and pray in secret, not like the hypocrites do. And I realized that God was telling me, these ashes aren't on your head because we're advertising the church. We're advertising your shame. And you can still repent. And you can still ask forgiveness. And you could still ask forgiveness from your father. And why would you ever question anything that happens in my church that I started? Everything about it is perfect. Everything has a reason. So um, from that day forward, every question that I've ever had about the Mass, every question that I've ever had about the church and its teachings, I'm telling you, I've been able to go straight to it. I can find it. I know what it is. It, it's, like, it's like I've got the GPS turned on now. Praise God. You all are going to be filled up with the Holy Spirit. You're all called to be kings, to do his holy work. And you're all about to have the oil that gives you the sending forth to do that. So guys, go and do it. Thank you. Like Mikey says, just do it. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and then kindle them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created. You shall renew the face of the earth. The Lord be with you. With Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. What's next week? Anointing of the sick next week, next Tuesday. Uh, for anyone that wants to stick around, uh, we're going to get, we may be a couple minutes late, but we're going to get the rosary dialed up anyway, and we can jump in wherever they are. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for being here online, and uh, we'll be here again next week. So thank you very much. was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. You're just tuning in right now. This is the Family Rosary Cross America live on Relevant Radio. And wherever you are, I'm glad you could join us. You don't even have to be Catholic to pray. It's free. The prayers are real easy. And the reason we pray is because Jesus said pray always. And these prayers are rooted in the sacred scriptures. And what makes me happiest about the rosary is we mention the name of Jesus Christ 59 times during the rosary. How about that? And it goes to about 230 million people around the country. You know, so on Judgment Day, at least we can say, well, we did that. It's <laughs> <laughs> a great thing to point out. It's you really, know, I yes. might not have anything else going for me. We did that. <laughs> right? You got to give me some credit. I'll try to remember. <laughs> Yep. Yes. <laughs> okay, Karen, let's take some of your prayer intentions. The first sorrowful mystery is the agony of the garden. Okay, we want to um, offer prayers of thanksgiving for Irma in Chicago for her return to good health. She had been sick with COVID for three months and is now finally back at work and feeling better. Thanks um, be God. Yes, indeed. Lou in California would like continued prayers for her son, Sean, who was involved in a motorcycle accident. He's oh. been in the ICU for 32 days suffered a brain injury, um, not doing well, suggestions of possibly taking him off. Sean, yeah, and we want to... Lord, wanna please save him. Yes, miraculous healing, and we're praying for Sean's mom, Lou, who's celebrating her birthday today, so maybe a birthday miracle oh, yeah. is in order. Hang Pete, in there, Lou. Yes, and Pete in Atlantic Beach, New York, is also, also offering prayers of thanksgiving to our Lord for the healing he is going to do in my daughter, Caitlin, and for all those who are away from the Lord. And I like that, claiming it. Yes. God bless and, you. Okay, yeah. So we have a lot of calls tonight, too, Father Rocky. So I bet. Let's get to the phones. Yes, Betty is calling from Chicago. Hi, Betty. Hi, Father. I'd like to pray for my mom. She's having allergies, and she's scheduled for her vaccination Saturday, so I pray for my parents. And all of those are going to get their vaccinations, that everything goes well. 
And also for my 4-H family, my whole family, we need the 4-Hs, as you said. I love that. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you thought it was the farm club. Remember at the county <laughs> fairs, they had the 4-H club? I think it was I like home yours better. Hearth. But I say it's holy, humble, healthy, and happy. Yeah. We need priests who are holy, humble, healthy, and happy. Why healthy? So they can work to their hundred. Yeah. How's that? Yeah. Thank you, Betty. Let's take another prayer intention here. Okay, we're call uh, Luke is calling from Bloomington, California. Hi, Luke. Hi, Father Rocky. I like that name, Luke. It reminds me like, mm -hmm. like Luke Skywalker, St. Luke. <laughs> What's your prayer intention, Luke? I would like to pray for my nanny and my grandpa so that we get a new house and it goes good. Oh, and when do you want to get your new house? Soon. Soon. Like how, big do you, how big do you want it to be? Like, like, like four bedrooms and like a swimming pool. Not, not Four like <laughs> bedrooms, and I'm writing this down, and a swimming pool. Well, that sounds like the house I grew up in. It was four bedrooms, and when I was a freshman in high school, we put it in a swimming pool. Wow. That was quite an adventure. <laughs> well, I'm going to pray that you get that, Luke. How old are you? I am nine. What a great age. What's your favorite baseball team? Do you like baseball? I like the Dodgers. Oh, that's awesome. They're from Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. But you know, they started out in New York. They were the Brooklyn Dodgers. But then they heard that California was the place to be, so that's where they moved to. Okay, Luke, let's pray. First, sorrow from mysteries of agony in the garden. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. It says, Happy 96th birthday to Gogs. She looks pretty good for 96. <laughs> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, my Jesus. Forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The second sorrowful mystery is the scourging at the pillar. Karen? Anne in Eagle Lake, Maine, asks for prayers for her grandson Joshua, who just joined the U.S. Air Force, that our Blessed Mother Mary protect him always. God and bless uh, And we have a prayer here from Nora in East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. We're praying for the safety of her son Thomas in the U.S. Navy and for her teenagers, Michael, William, and Teresa. Patricia in Lesby, Maryland, asks that we pray for Brother John and Sister-in-Law Diane, who are recovering from COVID-19. 
and Gina in New Jersey asked for prayers for her pregnancy. I know where Lusby, Maryland is. My sister and daughter lives wow. down there. So <laughs> Chesapeake Bay, how about that? Wow. That's way down there. And then Patsy Garcia wrote on the YouTube page to remember to pray for all of the people in South Texas in the citrus farming industry because oh, yes. that cold wave Right. I think uh, ruined their crop. That's mm -hmm. that's really sad. You know, that's where you get mm -hmm. grapefruit from and oranges mm -hmm. down by McAllen in Edinburgh, Texas. Right. Lord have mercy on them. I hope everybody helps each other out. Let's go to the phones. James in California. Hi, James. How are you? Hi, Father Rocky. Thanks for calling. Um, thank you're welcome. Mm hmm. <laughs> And what's your prayer intention, James? Um, so I like to pray for my mom and dad because they recently just got divorced and they haven't been getting along. And I want to oh. pray for my nanny because she's getting a house um, soon. Oh, I'm really sorry to hear that. James, how old are you? I'm 11. Do you have any brothers and sisters? Yes. And how many brothers and sisters do you have? I have one brother and one sister. My sister's name is Scarlett, and my little brother's name is Bodie. Scarlett, Bodie, and James. Well, James, this is hard for you and your brother and sisters and your mom and dad. But I've seen before, sometimes people got divorced, they make up. And they get back together again. So always have that hope. Love both your mom and dad. I don't know the particulars. It's happened in my own family too. But the fact that you're reaching out, we're all praying for you, praying for your mom and for your dad and for Scarlett and for Bodie. So be a, be, be a believer here, James, You know, because you're reaching out to Jesus and Jesus, he can work miracles. Okay, let's take another phone call here. We've got Jeanette calling from Rio Rancho, New Mexico. Hi, Jeanette. Hi, Father Rocky. Thank you for your ministry. Mm -hmm. um, I'm calling with a prayer uh, in request, uh, a prayer in, thanks, in Thanksgiving, because 15 months ago I uh, had my first chemo session, and I had my last chemo session today, and I'm so <laughs> thankful. Um, also, I would like to pray for all the women who are diagnosed, have been diagnosed or will be diagnosed today with breast cancer, that they be given the graces that they need to walk this journey in faith. Well, God bless you, Jeanette. You sound pretty strong for having just come off chemo today. And I'll bet the Lord has cured you. And we're going to pray for your complete cure and remission so you can be strong, healthy, happy, and holy. And, uh, and humble too, so you can serve the Lord and many other people. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, my Jesus. Forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The third sorrowful mystery is the crowning with thorns. Let's go to the phones and take your prayer intentions. Okay, we have Carrie calling from Phoenix. Hi, Carrie. Hi, Father Rocky. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for asking. Well, thanks for having me. Um, I just mm -hmm. wanted to have a quick prayer intention for an acquaintance that I just found out. Uh, she's pregnant due in July with a baby girl. Good. And she needs some more. Yes, but she needs more testing, and there's a chance for Down syndrome, and she won't. Um, she's contemplating not having the baby if... Well, oh, just tell her so. there's a chance the child will grow up and be a saint and change the world. Mm -hmm. There's a chance there too, right? Exactly, yes. Yeah, let's pray for her. And, um, and you'll see from time to time we have Down syndrome children on the, on the pictures on the screen. You know what they all have in common? They're smiling. Mm -hmm. They're happy. All they do is give you love. Down syndrome children, they just got like all this awesome love is just coming right out of them. That's true. You know, it's a great, great thing. So thank you, Carrie. We're going to pray for that. Now let's take another phone call here. Okay, we have Jeannie calling from Bergen, New York. Hi, Jeannie in Bergen, New York. Hello, Father Rocky. I'm, I'm, my prayer intention tonight is for a friend who he has stage four bowel cancer and he is not strong enough at the moment for chemo. And because, as you say, the prayers are across the country, I'm asking for prayers for healing and comfort, and also for his uh, wife, children, grandchildren, and siblings, that, that they're comforted and um, can get through this with him. Good for you. Thanks for getting through and getting that prayer intention on. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The fourth sorrowful mystery is the carrying of the cross. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, my Jesus. Forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Let's go back to the phones. Okay, we have Juan, and he's calling from North Texas. Hi, Juan. Hi, Father Rocky. Thank you for everything you do and bringing us close to God every day. You bet. Uh, my prayer intentions are from five, uh, Diana Landeros, and my daughter who's graduating this year, Cassandra Landeros, for uh, praying for guidance for her. Um and praying for the rest of my family, John, Carmelo, Jordan, and Micah. <laughs> All right, so you got Diane, Cassandra, John, Carmel, and who is the last one? Jordan and Micah. Jordan and Micah. Well, that's a great family. Yeah. And you're the dad? Yes, yes, I am. And you pray the rosary with your family? Every night, every awesome. night, every night. Good for you. We should send you a trophy. We need more dads like that. My dad used to do it too, although sometimes he'd fall asleep by the third ministry. <laughs> he worked so hard, but it was great. God bless you, Juan. Let's take one more phone call here. Okay, we have Ella, and she's calling from Melbourne, Florida. Hi, Ella. Hi. How are you? Good. Is it sunny in Florida? Yeah. Oh, you're lucky. What's your prayer intention, Ella? Um, that my grandma is, is going to have a safe trip home, and that that great grandma is healthy. Okay. You want your great grandma to be healthy, and you want your grandma to have a safe trip home. How is she getting home? Is she walking or riding her bike? 
flying. Oh, she's flying. <laughs> so it's a long way away. So she's not going to walk home, is she? Nope. No, no. How old are you, Ella? Seven and a half. Oh. Wonderful. So six more months. So will your birthday in September? So April. Oh, you're seven and nine tenths. It's coming up. <laughs> All right, Ella, God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful night. We're going to pray for your grandmother and your great-grandmother. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus, Mary, Joseph, angels, and saints praying with us in heaven tonight. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, moms and dads. Especially thank you, boys and girls across America, Karen and our team here at Rally Radio for joining us for the family, Rosary Across America, brought to you by Ave Maria University. Good night, and God bless you. We'll be back tomorrow at the same time.